guys this is Dawn how are you <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out Maria maybe you can chime in help me how do I share my camera it is your camera is on it is am I full screen yeah oh okay well I'm a little on my screen so that works okay you're well, on. hello everybody my, I'm gonna fix my screen for painting with you okay all right hello everybody welcome to our fourth uh online paint party hi katrina okay katrina says she can see us both hi kate why don't i see maria so my specialty is not technology actually none of ours is technology but uh, you guys get experience this fun with us <laughs> um up at the top right click gallery view instead of speaker view Oh, that's right. Okay. That did it. And then if mine, I might be showing up twice, you can remove my box and just go to the one that says Maria phone because that's the one I have my camera on my canvas. Okay, that's the one I see. Is that the one you guys see? Right now you see her easel oh, and black canvas. Hi, Trina. Welcome back. Okay, and Katrina says she can see yours. Okay. All right. So good. So everybody, welcome back again. Um, I was moderating the chat earlier when Mandy painted our Rainbow Sparkles unicorn. So I rest you some um, familiar faces on there. So welcome back again. Glad you guys came back. Um, so tonight we're actually going to paint uh, this one right here, which is called Water Lilies. I don't know if you guys can see that. I've got a light on. If you guys think that's too bright, let me know. Um, and I can turn it off. I just I'm in my kitchen and uh, we, oh, we have our like cam lights in here So I didn't know if it would be too dark without an extra light But if it's if it's causing too much of a glare, let me know and I can turn that off So anyway, um, this is what we're going to be painting um, you guys uh, hopefully you um, Printed off the template which will look something like this and yes, it is cut off on the edges and yes, this is all there is to it um, because we're going to freehand the rest of it. So um, hopefully, like I said, you guys had an opportunity to um, paint your camp. Your, yeah. Uh, yes, Ella, totally okay if you freehanded it. Um, so hopefully you have a black canvas. Um, and there's a couple different ways to get the stencil on there. And by the way, I should do introductions first. Uh, my name is Don Carey. Um, I'm a guide here in Colorado and one of the RT coaches. And then I have Maria on the phone with us, or on the computer with us as well. She's going to be painting along with me. So you guys will be able to watch her up close and she's waving at you guys now. <laughs> um, so anyway, so Maria is gonna be painting so you guys can see up close what she's doing. And the fun part about this is Maria hasn't painted this painting before. This is her first time. So she's gonna be kind of learning it along with you guys. If I go too fast, just let me know, um, and I will try and slow down. Um, I'll try and, you know, kind of keep an eye on Maria to see where she's at, and uh, hopefully kind of judge the speed off of that. Um, also, we have Mandy on our chat, as well as Tammy. Um, they did the Rainbow Sparkles one earlier, so you probably are familiar with them as well. So we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, so what we need right now, like I said, is a black canvas and our template. And there's a couple different ways to trace a template onto your canvas. Um, I'm going to be using uh, this white graphite paper. Um, it also comes in black or gray. And if you have that, that works too. Um, I'm going to be using white because it shows up better on black. But not only that, um, you guys won't be able to see any black lines on my canvas. So hopefully you'll be able to see the white. So what I'm going to do first and foremost 
is kind of line this up on my canvas. You can kind of see the little stems right there go off the bottom. So if you take your canvas and just kind of bend that template, you're gonna center it on your canvas as best as you can, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then right where those flowers end at the bottom, and again, this does not need to be perfect, just kind of bend your piece of paper over the edge of your canvas, and that'll kind of hold it in place for you. All right. Yeah, and um, if you guys don't know, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there is a chat box. There's also Q&A, but what you're going to want to use is the chat box. And Mandy is on there, and I think Tammy as well, and they're going to be moderating it. So if you have any questions, just ask it there, and one of them will be able to answer it. And I'll try and um, kind of look at it as well as we go. So, um, so we've got that bent on the bottom of the canvas. And what I'm going to do is slide my um, uh, graphite paper behind it. Um, and you want to put, if you have graphite paper, do the shiny side down. If you don't have graphite paper, there's um, a couple other ways you can do this. If you take a pencil on the back of the, um, on the back of your piece of paper, you can, um, you can do lines like, uh, scribble like this all along the, um, the design, if you can kind of see through it. And then if you trace it, then your pencil will go onto your canvas. And another way to do it is if you have chalk, you can also chalk the back of your um, piece of paper and do this exact same thing. So a couple different options for you um, to get the, the template on there. Um, so I'm gonna line mine up real quick and I'm gonna just try and turn my camera so you all can see what I'm doing. That's about as best as I can get it, but you can look at Maria's. She's doing the exact same thing. So what we're going to do, like I said, is center that in the middle of the canvas, and then that edge will be bent on the bottom. If you want, you can tape this in place. Don't ask me right now. Um, and then we're literally going to take a piece of pencil, or a piece of pencil, a pencil, and trace it. So just trace those shapes on there, like so. Now, don't worry if your lines are perfect. Um, these lines are actually going to get covered up with paint later. So you really just want to get the idea of where everything is going to be and the size of it. And it's perfectly OK if you want to freehand this. You do not have to use my template at all. This is just to make it a little bit easier for you, um, those who you, of you who do not like to um, freehand. And um, also on this, you can kind of see that the, the flowers go off the edge a little bit so there's not um, like a full tip. Just draw that in there. And you can change these however you want. You can add more petals if you like. Just whatever you want. And those go, the uh, stems go right off the bottom of your canvas. All right. All right, so I'm gonna turn the music up a little bit in the background while we're doing this, just cause it's really quiet. <laughs> I'm not used to quiet parties. Like usually when we're at your guys' houses, you know, it's a party going on. So this is a little different for us, but thank you for hanging out with us. We're so happy to be able to bring a little bit of art to you guys, um, you know, while we're all stuck inside. And Don, we're not on Facebook, so you can play music. No problem. Okay. Can you hear the music? A little bit. Okay. Really. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I've got mine traced now. I'm going to kind of lift up my um, paper without moving it, just so I can make sure it's transferred over. And it has, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. Oops. So that's what mine looks like with the white graphite transfer. I'm going to 
Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a few minutes um, to get that traced on there. When you guys get done, just give like a thumbs up or a okay or something in the chat box so I can see when everybody is ready. Can I stand it up? Yes, I can. All right, Carmen's done. Thanks, Carmen. Lori, uh, I don't know if I'm going to say that right. Des Despa? Despi? I'm sorry if I said that wrong. <laughs> okay, Carol did it freehand. She's ready to go. Kate's ready. Maria's done, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm, done. I'm just trying to, I'm still playing with my camera, but I'm done. Okay. Tracing trick didn't work. Uh oh. Janice is going freehand. All right. I'll give you guys just another minute here. Okay. So the next um, part, as you notice, there's a lot more on this canvas than just the flowers, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna freehand the rest of this um, because that was the hardest part is just getting um, proportions right. Uh, so you can see me. Okay, so the hardest part is just getting the proportions right on the flowers, but the rest of this vines and, and grass and whatever, this is totally easy. So what I'm gonna do is put this to the side. And I'm going to use chalk just because, again, you guys will be able to see it since it's white. You can continue to use pencil if you want um, or whatever it is that you have. So I'm going to kind of stand to the side a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my vines. Okay. Now in the sample, there are, I'm move this so you guys can see it better. Ah, maybe. Sorry. This is my technical setup here. I've got like an easel on a box. I mean, we're going total high tech here. <laughs> well, that's not gonna work. I'll just do this. Okay, that's the best I can do. Okay, so if you can see there's one, two, three, and four vines on here. You can do as many or as few vines as you like on yours. Um, and just notice this one is only two leaves. And this is only half of one that kind of goes off the side of the canvas. So uh, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way. That's just, that's just not gonna work. Okay, here we go. Turn the canvas the right direction. All right, so I'm gonna start here on the left side of my canvas. Might be the right side on your screen, doesn't matter. And what I'm gonna do is just start with a wavy line and it's gonna come down and go tuck right behind the petal of this flower. So just kind of a wavy line. And I'm gonna double it up so that it's a little thicker, like so. So there's my first vine. And then I'm gonna do my second vine. I'm gonna work on this bad boy right here. And this one's gonna tuck right behind this petal over here. So, and it, it really doesn't matter where these go, I promise. And just a little bit of curve in there, just to give them a little bit of movement in life. So we've got two worms, all right. And then, like I said, this one over off the side is like you can't even see the vine. All you see is leaves as well as the, the two up top. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and start adding leaves to these vines. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna make like a, a pointy oval shape. Think of like a football or an eyeball or something like that. And I'm gonna start on one side and just come 
one line and then one line to the other direction. And then I'm gonna step down a little bit so they're not right next to each other. I'm gonna step down just a little bit and do another one. And then I'm gonna step down from that first one and do another one. And all the way down my vine, I'm gonna make these little leaves. And it's okay if they start going off the side of your canvas, that's perfectly fine. And if, they, if you happen to come across a flower, just have your leaves tucked behind them because we want the flowers to be in the foreground or the front of the painting. And we'll just keep adding those till we get all the way down to the bottom. Okay, something like that. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for this vine over here. Hopefully you guys can see this and my hands aren't in the way. Can you guys hear the music? I can Anybody? hear it pretty, pretty subtle in the background. Okay, not too loud, not too soft. Or should I turn it up? You can turn it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I've got two vines done. And then on this side, I'm just going to kind of put some leaves in here, go in the opposite direction. Of course, you can only see one side of the vine, so I'm only going to do one side of leaves coming down. Or if you put this one over too far, you might be able to see your whole vine. Totally up to you. No can wrong you way. The sample real quick, just so I can see that edge a little bit. Thank you. Okay, they go in outward. Okay, thank you. I'm good. And I'm, what I'm doing on these leaves here is I'm putting them behind this other vine, or you can make them go in front, whatever you want to do. Just make, by layering them like that, you're just giving a little bit of dimension to your painting and figuring out what goes in front and what goes behind. But totally up to you. And you guys can see Maria is actually doing hers with pencil, so you can still see that really well. Better if you're in person, so I'm glad you can see it. Okay, and then finally, I'm just going to put two leaves up here at the top, right in the center. So I'm going to just do one that comes way down here, and then one that kind of peeks out from behind it. So now I've got two leaves up at the top. So I'm just going to hold this up for you guys for a minute or two and let you guys finish up. When you get done, give me a heads up so I just kind of know where everybody's at. Still drown leaves. I know there's a lot of leaves on here. <laughs> So a little bit backstory on this particular painting. Um, I Somebody had commented earlier that we're in Colorado and we haven't seen any water lilies. And that's very true. I don't think I've ever actually seen a real water lily. Um, I can't even think when I lived in California if I ever saw one. But um, in, I think it was January. Yeah, in yeah. Yeah, January, uh, the Monet exhibit came to the Denver Art Museum. And I went with um, a couple friends and we went and saw it. And that was kind of the inspiration behind this painting was, um, was Monet's water lilies. So um, it's not really done in the same style as Monet, um, but I also really love um, uh, Tiffany's 
stained glass. So I kind of did water lilies in a stained glass kind of look. So that's kind of the whole idea behind it. All right, we've got a few people who are ready. So Don, the one thing I learned from this painting is the word lilies only has one L. One L. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that. I misspelled it so many times like with on on so many documents I have put two L's in there and then I realized I'm like wait I'm misspelling this so I've learned <laughs> that Lily's only has well technically two L's but only yeah, for some reason spell check doesn't catch it when you do it <laughs> I know I know <laughs> I think it's kind of like you know the word gray you can spell it with an E or an A <laughs> <laughs> Maybe water lilies, you can have one L or two. But yeah, yeah if well, you look when I finally I Googled it and everything, you'll see part of it has two L's and like what I didn't catch to go back and fix. <laughs> yes. So that's a little education for tonight. Lilies only has one L in the middle. I'm glad it's not Monet style because he used like 50 shades of green and it's very difficult to paint like Monet. <laughs> yeah. I know, I, like a lot of the pictures I took at the exhibit are like right up close to the painting because I was so amazed. Like with Gallery on the Go, if you guys have done our parties, we always paint the background first almost, but there's never any background showing through. Even if we have a white canvas, we always paint it white. But a lot of times, like you can clearly see his canvas, like he didn't cover it up. Like he just made like, like swirls of lines for waves on the canvas, but he didn't paint the water first. So. Like, I was so amazed with his technique. I was just, like, really looking up close. <laughs> Probably missing the picture as a whole because I was caught up in the details. But one of the cool things about his paintings was that, like, far away, they look really detailed. And when you get up close, they're so messy. And I was just, I was intrigued. <laughs> okay, looks like we've got quite a few people ready. Does anybody else need some more time? Ready to roll. What's up? And we're ready to roll. Ready to roll. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, bring this one up down low here. My easel's gonna fall. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some grass, and there's two layers here. And then um, this is our horizon line right here. And then if you can see, if you're so sure. Oh, the glare's too strong on that one. Uh, there's one kind of that goes right here, and then there's one that kind of swoops up high up here, if you guys can see those. So that's what we're gonna add next. You can add more layers if you want, or fewer, however you want. I like to start right on the horizon line, which is gonna come down um, about an inch lower than the stem, kind of right there. So I'm just gonna carry this line, and this is kind of a bendy line, so I'm just gonna carry it down to that, um, to that flower petal. And then on this side, it's a little straighter, so I'm just gonna carry it over to that flower petal. And then if you can see your grass, like between my uh, flower and my um, leaf right there, I'm just gonna make a little line between there. And then same thing on this side. You can make like a curve or however you want for your, this again, this is the, um, the top layer right here. So it should be, a little less than halfway up your canvas. And then I'm gonna do one about midway between that one and the bottom. And again, this is gonna be kind of a curvy one and it really doesn't matter how you do this. So I'm gonna make mine come down and back up. The idea is just that it's divided into areas, not so much what the areas are shaped like. And if you happen to cross over your stems, that's perfectly fine too. All of this is gonna get covered up. So if you don't like a line, just fix it. It's okay. We're gonna paint over all of this. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this line up here. Right here, the one that kind of goes along there. So you can kind of see it goes right through the top of this flower about yay high. So we'll put that off to the side again and demonstrate. So about right here, I'm gonna make that line come across. 
And this one's pretty straight. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but pretty straight. And then I'm gonna come back just uh, about an inch higher than the side of that one, which is gonna be kind of behind this leaf over here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a sharp curve up and then go all the way across my canvas up there. So this looks like a mess, right? Because it is. <laughs> That's okay. All right, give you guys a minute on that. And then we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna add our last element, which is gonna be these little floating orbs in the sky. I'm gonna set that down for one second. I think it might be easier. I brought my stand-up easel here. Um, let's see if you guys can see this any better. If I put it there, is that better or worse? Yeah, that looks good. That looks huh? good. Yeah, it looks good. Does that look good? And I was, I had it there, but the easel is so. I mean, it's a stand-up easel, but it's short. Yeah, and then when when you show stuff, you can just bring it back up again. Yeah, there you go. Then I'll get rid of that. I was on here earlier trying to figure out the best way to set this up. Just not having the best of luck with it. Okay, too, a little too far to see. <laughs> One last option. We'll see I think it's good for now, and then just bring it up whenever you talk about elements. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, and you moved it since she commented that, so I think you're better now. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah you're good. All right. Yay. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add some of these little floating orbs. I'm bringing it up close. So these are these little circles. There's no rhyme or reason to where these are, but they do overlap pretty much everything, but there are none overlapping the flowers. So um, what I'm going to do is just kind of pick some random spots. And they can, like, literally, they can go over on top of, uh, on top of um, leaves and stuff. Um, like I said, we're going to paint over all of this. So don't worry if these kind of overlap what you've already got on there. We just want to get them on there. Put one there, and I'm going to put one more down here. How many do you do, Don? Six? Um, I have six on here. So there's one, two, three, four. I'll put one more right here. The, uh, the accountants in the room would like to know how many you put on there. <laughs> yes, Maria is, is very detail oriented and artistic. She uses both sides of her brain. She's amazing. <laughs> Okay, so I know, I know that's a really messed up one. You guys can do a better circle than me. <laughs> okay, so that's really it for the outlining portion of this. So give me a heads up when you're ready and we will start moving on to some paint. Yay, let's paint. Let's paint. I'm gonna break a cardinal gallery on the go rule. And I am using paper plates tonight because I don't feel like cleaning um, palettes. <laughs> so if you have paper plates, that works. If you don't, you can use a palette. Whatever you have works. Um, the colors we're going to start off with is we're actually going to start with the leaves. And the reason I start with the leaves is because um, I like to start at the top of the canvas because then my hand doesn't smear it as I move down. Um, and not only that, but because this background is so busy right now, Getting those little pieces, which are all those leaves, done first just really helps me um, kind of piece it all together in my mind. So what we're going to use 
is kind of a greenish blue color for these leaves. So um, what I like to do is if, if you have like a phthalo blue you can use, or green, you can use that. Um, or you can mix a little bit of blue and green with a tiny bit of white to get, um, to get kind of more of like a tealish color. So Maria, I think, is going to use the blue and the green to do the teal. Um, I'm going to, I have this dark green color that I'm going to use. It's the phthalo green. So whatever you have is fine. The main thing is that we just want to use a lot of different colors throughout this because there's a couple different shades of green, but I'll show you the ones that I use. You can decide if those are ones you want to use. But you, of course, have the artistic freedom to do any colors that you want. Oh, I just broke the lid on my paint. Oops. I should have should have had that prepared before. <laughs> okay, so I'm also going to put a little bit of white on my plate. So I've got this dark green color, and I've got white. And I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use uh, this brush right here. It's um, it's about a quarter inch brush, I would say, and it's a flat tip. You could also use, actually, you know what, I lied. I'm not going to use that brush. I'm going to use this one. So this is more of a pointy brush. Um, yeah, it's just a pointy brush. So you can use whatever you have. Either one will work. So when we paint, I'm going to add a little bit of white. And you don't have to add white into yours, but I need it, I need to be able um, for it to be seen a little bit better. And the light, the white will add a little bit to there. So when we do the leaves, basically what we're going to do, and this is throughout the entire painting, is we're not going to paint right up to the line. Okay? So it's okay if you have a little bit of space between your shapes. It's okay if you go to the line, but just keep in mind that that line is going to be covered with, um, with black paint later, so you really don't have to worry about it. And what we want to do is, um, and I didn't do this the first time, so uh, what we want is we want to do a, a, bleh, a dry brush technique. So when you get some paint on your brush, let me put that down for a second, you should have like a paper towel or something and just kind of wipe your brush off a little bit to get some of that extra paint off because we don't want to completely cover the black. We want some of that black to show through so it kind of looks really sketchy like. And I'm going to hold this up close to the camera so you can see. But do you see all these little black spots in the, um, in the painting? So you can see a lot of black showing through there. And the way we get that is by number one, not coming all the way to these lines right here. So you can see it kind of looks a little bit of sketchy behind there. And you can also see like black patches coming through. So that's how we're gonna do it is just the dry brush. So again, you just wipe some of that paint right back off your brush. And then when you paint, sorry, trying to do this through the camera, you'll be able to see that it's not giving you complete coverage. It's really, really sketchy. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. But we're gonna do this for all of the leaves. Is that Huey Lewis in the background? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, I love Huey Lewis in the news. Flashback. Throwback, <laughs> right flashback. I've got Once a what station is it? Is it a Pandora station or is it like your own music? It's just my music. <laughs> that's a that's an oldie and a goodie. I, I've got eclectic style. <laughs> There's Not a little bit of everything. Snapling. There will probably be quite a few I have to skip on here. If you. <laughs> we are family friendly. <laughs> Is Tammy on here too? I haven't heard Tammy's voice. I don't think so. Where'd she go? She ditched. <laughs> she ditched us. Okay. So if you've got like an orb kind of coming in front of one of your leaves, just make sure you stay behind the orb. Those are 
the orbs are in the foreground. All right. So while we're working on this, you guys can tell us, I know we have some of, you know, from the earlier paint party, I saw some of the people on there, but everybody else tell us um, what, what you're doing. Are you doing like a family paint party? Is anybody having a date night? Like fill us in on what's going on with you guys. I should have made my husband paint tonight. He probably, he probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Do and we have K Kate, mom and daughter are in the house? Kate, is that Kate from my craft clubs, Kate? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. the one. <laughs> so Kate actually is a librarian. I've done a couple paint parties at her library in Fort Lupton. So she is. She loves kids. She's really good with them. Oh, we've got some teens, little teen date. Aww. We've got another mother daughter. Ella was bored and likes art, so figured why not. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ooh, Kate's doing virtual story times. Kate, I think I might, maybe, did I, I feel like I met a guy at the rec center whose wife was a librarian somewhere. I thought at Fort Lupton. Do they live in Reunion? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes, we've met. Okay, <laughs> yay. <laughs> oh, and Carol's painting with her granddaughters and Looks like some in one house and some in another house. Aww. Yeah, we have to get creative. My family's doing a little Zoom party um, later tonight. And my husband was invited to a 40th birthday Zoom party um, earlier this week. They did a little Zoom birthday party for a friend of his that was turning 40. Oh, my, my birthday is tomorrow and I kind of feel like it's very anticlimactic. <laughs> Well, we can have a Zoom party for you, Don. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> and you can have virtual birthday cake. It's the best kind. It doesn't end up on your thighs. <laughs> it still will. <laughs> so again, remember guys that the paint is really sketchy. So you can see the black coming through there. We don't want this to look perfect. This is your best excuse to make a sloppy, sloppy painting tonight. <laughs> and it all comes together at the end. Like, it looks awful until this one gets finished. I gotta remember what's a leaf and what's, what's a hill. <laughs> I think that's a leaf. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it is. No, I think that's a leaf. How are you guys doing? Is everything coming out all right for you? <laughs> so once you get like a good base coat on these leaves, what you can do if you want is start going back over some of them and adding a little bit of dimension to them. And the way you do that is by deciding like what side your light is coming from. So um, let me show you on this one. So if you guys can see this okay, if I turn it like that, you can kind of see that this side of the, um, of the orb is a tiny bit lighter than the other side. 
and one side of the leaves is generally maybe usually a little bit lighter than the other. So if you want to come back with like a little darker or less white on one side or a little bit, um, either way, darker or lighter, either way you want to go, if you want to do one side of the leaf, just make sure all of the leaves that are facing your light source are the same. So all the left sides or all the right sides, or if your light's right in the middle, then maybe it's the uh, left sides of these and the right sides of those. So if you want to, it's definitely not needed. Just an option for those who are bored. <laughs> Need a little more stimulation or challenge maybe. Oh, maybe stimulation isn't the right word. <laughs> So if you don't want to wipe your paintbrush off on a paper towel every time, um, what you can do is um, just take some of your paint. Let's see if I can show this a little better. And I just kind of grab a tiny bit from the edge and then kind of wipe it around on my uh, plate a little bit so I don't have very much paint on my brush at all. So that's another option if you don't want to use paper towels. And I know it's hard to do it, but fight the temptation to fill these in completely. I keep saying it, but just try and leave them kind of sketchy. You don't want these completely filled in. Or maybe you do. <laughs> it's up to you. It's your artwork. I'm just telling you how I do it. You do it however you want to do it. <laughs> All right, I think I have a leaf behind that flower. Again, that's why I start with the leaves is just so I can kind of figure out like <laughs> where they all are since they're so plentiful. We have a healthy, healthy vine. It's a jungle vine. Well, I don't think so. I don't think water lilies grow in the jungles. Right. Oh, so that's a good idea to tie your hair back if you have long hair so you don't paint it green. <laughs> Didn't realize I had a hair hanging down there until I had green hair. <laughs> oh, snowing! I heard it was supposed to snow today, but I thought it was supposed to snow earlier. <laughs> They've been calling for snow, but I never, but it wasn't ever happening. Is it no, finally snowing? It is coming down. It snowed for us earlier today, but I mean, no accumulation. It's not snowing now, though. Yeah, I don't think we we're supposed to get very much, like maybe an inch total. 82, that, Lori, that must be Florida, I'm guessing. Are you the Floridian that was on earlier? Oh, so jealous. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Is it pretty? My daughter's in here watching me paint. <laughs> and, eating and eating applesauce, she says. Okay, so I've kind of finished my leaves. Um, I'm just kind of highlighting one side or the other right now. And then um, what we're going to do is use the same color. Um, yes, you can add some white to it if you want. 
So if you want, you can highlight one side by adding a little bit of white into your green or vice versa, you can add a little darker. Um, but what we're gonna do for the vines themselves, the, the, st the stems, the veins of this, the vines, I don't know what you call those. We don't have vines in Colorado either. <laughs> I guess we have little ones, but anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add extra white into that same green for the stems themselves, whatever they are, <laughs> for the inside of the vines. So I added more white, so this is much lighter than even where I added some white in there. And I'm just gonna come in and paint the inside of that vine that we outlined. Sorry, Donna, I missed it. Did you say you added white to make it lighter? Yes, so this, even if you added white to your green earlier, we wanna add more white this time to make it a much lighter green than we had previously. And again, don't forget, we wanna go with the dry brush technique. This entire painting is done with the dry brush. I think I only have two vines. Yeah, I do. Oh, who's in Chicago? Oh, Lisa, Lisa, one of our guides. Oh, that's right. I was thinking I knew that name. <laughs> that's funny. It's snowing and raining where Trina is. If your brush starts drying out too much on you, just give it a rinse in your water cup and then make sure you dry it off again. Um, oh, Trina's in Commerce City. That's where we are. <laughs> well, not Maria. Maria's not, she's in Lone Tree. <laughs> she left us. I didn't leave on my own free will. It's important. <laughs> Our property taxes over here are astronomical. My husband and I, for one of our favorite things to do is go and look at model homes. And uh, we were looking at some the other week and the guy asked where we lived and we told him and he said, oh, where all the high property taxes are. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's Don, us. you can't pay property taxes at a party. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we're not talking taxes. I know we were sitting around a table one night and somehow we all started talking about life insurance or something like that. I'm like, we are the oldest, most boring people. Why are we talking about life insurance at dinner? <laughs> Just what old people talk about. No, they talk well, about Healthy. Our earlier today was a lot of fun with talking about unicorn and sprinkles and cupcakes. That's oh, true. that's right. So should I have people name their vines? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So I finished with mine, so I'm just giving you guys a little bit of time to, um, to catch up there. So it looks something like that when you're done. Looks like Maria's done. If you guys wanna give us a heads up when you're ready for me to move on. We get a lot of comments to slow down, so I just don't wanna hurry you guys up too much. <laughs> it's hard, like Mandy was saying earlier, it's hard when you're not at the party and you can't walk around and see everybody's paintings and see where they're at and interact with them. <laughs> so earlier we had it where, you know, the, the one doing the painting was the only one talking and then we realized that it's much better if we have a little bit of talk going on. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna set that down and I'm just gonna bring this one up closer for you guys if you wanna see that one while we wait. That, this one looks a lot better than my other one. <laughs> I was just looking through all the, the um, pictures that the kids had posted on Facebook of their unicorns. Mm -hmm. They did so good, oh my gosh. The one little guy, he doesn't look very big at all. And he did amazing. Just makes me so happy to see their cute little unicorns. I know. I saw a few friends that have joined and 
Um, I saw them on Facebook. They work super cute. So Ella said that we should try Zoom and ena enable everybody else's video next time. If anybody wants to go live, um, we can, you can um, let us know. We can turn your video on and we can see what you're doing if you want to, if you want to share. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I wanted to ask and poll our guests, like if they would want to be on video. The problem is um, when we have a lot of people on video, like Dawn and my screen get smaller. So then it's harder to view for people, but I thought it would be fun too to see what other people are doing. So if you want to go on video, we can promote you to a panelist and you can jump online. All right, Lori and Carmen and Janice are all ready. I'll wait for a few more people. I didn't see it, but my husband said he saw a story where um, a company was using Zoom for a meeting and the woman went in the bathroom and like set her phone down or something. And I, I don't know, she didn't know she was in the, like, she didn't realize she was on video or what, I don't know, but somehow she went in the bathroom. Well, she realized it pretty fast because she like hurried and like, turn the camera away real quick but yeah I saw that one I'm like oh no you didn't <laughs> yeah oh, there's probably like 12 zoom screens up on that one too <laughs> yeah oh well you'll all be happy to know I peed before we started so I'm not going to the bathroom <laughs> Thankful, yes, very thankful for that. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay, so if you need to keep working on your finds, feel free to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start working on our grass. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just use a regular green color. Um, just plain green. Oops. Ooh. And then I'm going to add um, some yellow on my uh, palette as well. Plate. I say palette loosely. And now I'm going to use the little bit bigger brush. So I got one of my super furry brushes because I think you don't need a super detailed one for this one. So this is still one of those quarter inch brushes but I just got one that isn't in great shape. You can use whatever one you want. So I've got green and yellow on here, and I'm just gonna mix a little bit off of the side here. And I want a lime green is basically kind of what I'm going for. So you can kind of add a little bit at a time until you get the color that you want. So if you guys, can see the difference. This is the regular green. This is some yellow mixed into it. And then I still have some yellow on my side. So again, I still want to do a dry brush technique here. And so since I just stirred up my paint, I've got a lot on there. So I'm going to wipe that off on my paper towel. Okay, so I've got that. And I'm going to start with the upper section of grass. So remember, we've got this bottom section down here down there and then we've got this upper section so this is the one I'm going to work on um, again you don't want to go right up to the lines you want to start like and this one is kind of a tap so if you what you don't want to do with your brush is go head on and jab it because you'll destroy your brush and then your brush will look like this but if you keep your brush a little bit on its side and then just kind of tap it on there so you're not destroying your brush, but you're still getting paint on it, off of it, I should say. And then I'm gonna come up near my edges, get a little closer so you guys can see that. So I'm gonna go near my edges, but I am not, number one, I'm not completely filling in the black. And number two, I'm not getting right up to that edge. And we're just gonna keep tapping on there. Is this song too slow? Can you guys even hear it? I <laughs> can't really hear it. Oh, well, it's over anyway. <laughs> so my husband's all upset. He just got us um, concert tickets to see Chris Stapleton in June, and he didn't buy the insurance for it. 
on the tickets. And then like literally two days later, the city shut down. <laughs> so we're hoping everything's back to normal by June so we can go see it. But if they cancel it, I think you get refunded. I hope so, but he didn't buy the insurance on the tickets. It doesn't, but if they don't have the event, you, they can't charge you. I hope not. <laughs> we have Eagles tickets, but they rescheduled. Ah. Uh, and I'll clarify, my husband bought Eagles tickets, <laughs> not me. <laughs> oh, come on, the Eagles are good. <laughs> so I take it he hasn't been able to sell them then, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> It was for this weekend or next weekend, I think. Oh. But they didn't cancel it. They rescheduled it. Well, that's good. Okay. As your first coat starts to dry, you're going to notice it starts fading a little bit. So you can go back in if you feel like it's faded too much and add a little bit, like some more dots over the top of it and you see they'll pop out a little bit more because it's a second coat. But don't add too much over them because again, I'll say it again, you still want to be able to see the black through it. <laughs> I sound like a broken record, I know, I'm sorry. Mine looks super bright in the screen in the TV, but it's not or on the screen. Yeah, it looks yellow from here. Yeah. It's it's slimy green. It's just I don't know, my lighting on my phone is weird. <laughs> Uh, Jessica says she has to leave. Um, yes, we will record this and we'll put it up on YouTube so you can catch it later. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks for joining. All right, so just keep going until you get all those grassy areas filled in. And that's the first band of, of, uh, of grass. So for the second band, we're gonna use the same lime green, except for I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it, so it's gonna be lighter. So if you want, you can also add more yellow. Um, that'll help lighten it up as well, but we still want to add a little bit of white in there and that'll really make it pop. So I added a little bit of, woo, up there. A little bit in there. Blimey, it's limey. <laughs> I amuse myself. <laughs> okay, so once you get that color done, we're gonna do the exact same thing just for the bottom section. So don't worry if you're not there yet. Just go ahead and go on to the next area if you are. Take your time if you're not there yet. Can you guys hear the music? Did you say to change the shade for the bottom one? Yeah, so I added um, a little bit more yellow and white to this one. Okay. Yes, I know that. I know this song. Who is it? <laughs> um, who? Hey, why hey, am I blanking? George. What's it? George. George Michael. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that George Michael was extremely shy in real life? 
I didn't know that. He was extremely shy and hated attention. So most of the stuff he did was kind of in the background. So he became a, a celebrity? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, hear, I hear that a lot. I hear that about lots of celebrities that are actually like introverts and very shy. Yeah, the um, lead singer of Metallica is too. Actually, it turned him into an alcoholic because he was so nervous to go on stage, he kept drinking beforehand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> um, Amy Schumer, I would not have known that about her, and she was, um, she was the same, she's very in, much an introvert. Are we overlapping the light green band with the first green band? Okay, so there's still, you still want to leave that little bit of space where your, uh, where your line is. So anytime you have a color come up to a shape, you want to make sure you leave that little bit of gap between them. Now, I would not have guessed Amy Schumer was shy either. I oh, know. Of course, then Robin Williams was depressed. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I listened to Amy Schumer's Audible book. It's not, it's pretty good. Mandy is the queen of audiobooks. <laughs> I know, and I have to share with you guys. I'm so excited of my cute little idea. So my dad is 80, I don't actually know how old he is, 80 something. And um, he is in a nursing home and as we know, nursing homes have been hit really hard with coronavirus. So they are on like full lockdown in their rooms. So they can't leave their rooms at all. Mm. So they can't go, um, they can't go to the, to the cafe to have their meals. They're having all their meals in their rooms. So you can imagine it's probably a pretty lonely time, like to not, you can't be, I mean, the staff can come in their room, but they're not allowed to, you know, they're not doing bingo anymore. They're not doing any of their activities. Um, so I, I called the nursing home and they agreed to help me with this little project. I sent him, I am from Amazon Prime, sent him a recorder, like a little digital recorder, because my dad loves to tell stories. He tells the best stories and like talks, like he just, he can talk to anyone. He has the best stories. So I told him, I'm like, what if I sent you a recorder and then you could just like, like just narrate your life, like tell us stories from when you were little, like he grew up on a farm, tell us, he was a truck driver for a long time. He had his own oil business for a while. I'm like, just tell us like stories from when you were a kid and growing up. So I sent him the little recorder and he's just been talking all day, just telling stories. So then the idea is that, you know, like I would love to hear those stories and then we can pass those down to his kids and our grandkids and great grandkids. And uh, it'll just be like my own little personal Audible. <laughs> I mean, I listen to Audibles all the time. I can just listen to my dad's own little Audible. That's a great idea. And it gives him something to do all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a perfect idea. Yeah. I did, um, so I, last year for, um, what do you call that? Black Friday, I got one of those Ancestry.com memberships. Mm -hmm. And I, I was kind of disappointed with it because all I could really find on most of our family was like census records and that kind of stuff. Um, but there was um, my, my great, great grandmother, her great granddaughter had sat down with her and got her life story and wrote it all down and uh, attached the file to, um, to her, to her ancestry profile. So it kind of inspired me. So then I went um, and I interviewed, um, my only remaining grandma and then, uh, my husband's two grandmas. Um, I interviewed them and I recorded it on my computer and got their story so that I could write them down. Oh, I love it. And, and then I'm you really can attach it to their DNA. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I'm really glad I did because then like within, um, probably within a couple months of doing that, my grandma, um, her, she got, um, Alzheimer's really bad, so she can't remember anything anymore. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm really uh, glad I got it when I did. <laughs> that's really cool. All right, how are you guys doing on your grass? Carrie's done. Mm. I'm done. 
I'm wondering if mine's too bright. I'll, I'll darken it up if I need to. I don't think you'll need to. Trino's ready. Asa's ready. Asa. I was just checking our dog door. I kind of locked the dogs out before we started and I just realized it was snowing. It looks like my husband took care of them. He let them in and put them in the kennel. All right. Okay, anybody need more time on this part? Okay, Janice still needs a little bit more time. Anybody want to join us on camera? No, quiet. It's <laughs> Nobody's good. been brave enough so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Most of the time, again, well, I'll have you know, Miss Carol, I'm business up top, but PJ's on the bottom. <laughs> Hi, Carol. It's Maria. Good to see you, hear from you. Yeah, I've been in pajamas for 16 days. <laughs> yeah, I, I changed my PJ top, you know, to go live, but I'm still did wearing pajamas. <laughs> did you guys see that, like, warning on Facebook where it was like, put your jeans on every once in a while. You get to thinking all is well in the kingdom when you're just wearing your PJ bottoms every day. <laughs> It'll <laughs> sneak up on you fast. Oh, I tell you what, I have discovered that I am a bored eater. Like, I've gained yeah. five pounds since, our, since we've been locked in. <laughs> yes. All right, we have a taker for video, so I'm gonna come find him. Woohoo! Who's our brave soul? I, the user is B Hughes, I think. So there you are. Just, you can take, you can add yourself to video. All right, Trina is ready. Janice, you ready? Or was it Trent, Janice? Yeah. Are you ready, Janice? Okay, we'll go ahead and get moving on. So we've got our two layers of grass right now. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our sky. So what we're gonna start with is um, a lighter blue. So we're gonna get, uh, start with a dark blue, if you have dark blue, um, or whatever blue you have is fine. And I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me. I had a dry spot in my throat, hold on. Oh, hey, here's hey, somebody. What's, what's going on? <laughs> Your painting. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I just got those paintings in the background. They did Cezanne last week. Oh, oh nice. yeah, that's awesome. Oh, oh Oops. <laughs> sorry if you guys can hear that. I installed Kids Messenger. Yes. Oh, those came out good. That's awesome from last week. I installed a kid's messenger for my kids so they can still socialize with their friends. And for some reason, their friends keep calling me instead. <laughs> yeah, their kid's message video or whatever. But the problem is kids are relentless, so they just keep letting it ring and ring and ring, and you can't send it away. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so here we go. I've got some dark blue on my palette or whatever blue you have, but whatever you have, we wanna add a little bit of white to it. Um, and it doesn't have to be a ton of it. You can reserve some of that blue for later, but I wanna make a lighter blue because the first section that we're gonna do is this middle section of our sky. And the reason I just start with that one is because it's the differentiating color, like, if you do that, then you know the darker color goes on top and bottom. So I just mixed a little bit of uh, white into my dark blue to make a lighter blue. Or if you have a light blue, you can do that. <clears throat> Whatever you have. I'll give you guys a minute to mix that up. 
But we're gonna do the same exact technique that we did for our grass, but in the sky. So I'm gonna kind of start right around where my lines are, just so I can kind of, um, I a lot of white in there, um, just so I can kind of see where it goes. So I'm just kind of following my lines. That one kind of got erased, but I know there's one there. Because I can see that one up there. And you might need to kind of switch to a smaller pointier brush to get down between these light leaves if you need to. But right now I'm just trying to get a general layer on here of where this color goes so that I can, uh, I can fill it in, but just so I know where my sections are. Where's that one? Sorry, I had to turn a little bit so I could see where I was working. Okay. So again, right now I'm just kind of patting in some of the areas so I can see where I'm working at. So that's what I've got so far. Again, super messy, just getting a general idea of where my sky is. Excuse me for one second, my nose is running. Okay, sorry. My husband always asks me how I have allergies in winter. I don't know the answer, but it's I know. It's called coronavirus. <laughs> I got the corona. I don't want to, I don't want to identify you as such, but. <laughs> you just want somebody in quarantine with you, Maria. Right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch down to my smaller brush, just because this one's a little too big for me. I can't get between my leaves. So use whatever brush you need to use here. You didn't get any accumulation of snow at all, Maria? No, mm -mm. and it's not snowing now either. My grass is already covered. Wow. And we never get snow over here. Like we're the, I feel like we're in this like no, no weather zone. And again, make sure you're not like dabbing your brush head on to the point because you'll destroy your brush. Try and uh, hold it a little sideways so that uh, you're just kind of tapping the side of the bristles instead of the edge. Back to my music. There we go. So normally during my paintings, when people really get to a point where they're concentrating, it always gets super quiet. <laughs> and uh, I kind of feel like everybody must really be concentrating because I can't hear anybody. <laughs> it's hard. Maria's already done. She's fast. I paint so fast. <laughs> I don't have, I don't paint with very much accuracy or detail. Well, this is the perfect painting for you then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so once you get that layer of your sky done, we're gonna do the other two layers of the sky, um, but we're just gonna use the darker blue for this one. So without any white added to it, and the sh yours is so dark or that you can't see it, but it is truly very dark, if you can see. It's almost, it almost looks black, but it's a very dark blue. So we're gonna do the two remaining layers of your sky with that uh, dark blue. So same exact technique, just filling in the rest of that sky. The nice thing about this painting is that you you don't have to be like very good at like painting in the lines. Like <laughs> it's just really a whole bunch of dabbing. It's kind of a different technique than we usually do though, so it's kind of kind of fun for a little change up. Do you remember was it like would have been like late eighties, early nineties, yeah, like late eighties. I was really popular to, um, did we use like feather dusters or something and like sponged walls? <laughs> Do you remember ever doing that? Yes. I remember we moved into a new house during that time. Well, it was an old house that my mom bought and redid. And um, she was like flipping houses before flipping houses was cool. And um, we, she loved that sponge technique because that was like the brand new thing. And we had to like like dab sponge every room in that house so this gives me like ptsd of remembering <laughs> and like dabbing all those all those walls and he's going to be telling all of her hostesses you can pick any painting except water lilies <laughs> <laughs> i can't go there i want to say we use like a feather duster maybe or i don't remember what all we used to do the dabbing but like every wall in the house was like dabbed like that we didn't own a house we always rented but my dad owned a house and he did his living room all sponged mm -hmm. that was the thing i hope no one has sponge walls now and um, <laughs> they think i'm making fun of their walls okay what goes around comes around it, it's probably back in style I know. I was just shopping for jeans on American Eagle, and um, the overalls are the cool new thing again. Oh wow! Yes. I, so, so Macy is um, nineteen. She'll be twenty in August, and I wore my overalls home from the hospital when I had her. So, I wonder if I still have them. You do, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> those look so pretty i almost wish i was painting <laughs> almost <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost wish <laughs> i know i was kind of envious of painting your unicorn earlier i was like i want to paint a unicorn <laughs> i know he was so cute he, she, whatever it is. It was so they cute. They were so cute. Did, have you seen them all pop up? Yeah, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of them on Facebook. They're adorable. All right, so I got that first layer done, if you guys can see that. What's that? Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Tony and I were chatting. Did you hear him? We could do an intermission and let him dance for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Maria, tell, tell everybody about Tony's dancing that he's picked up. Oh yeah, he has his um, headphones on, so he won't, he can't hear me. <laughs> yeah, that app is super hilarious. You guys should have your husbands do it. Start a dad band. I guess when I first saw it, I just thought he was actually dancing. I didn't know it was an app. What app is it, Maria? Where'd Maria go? I don't know. I worry over the situation. I know we'll be all right. Perhaps it's just. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I think my Wi Fi was getting weird. Hold on. Night after night. Here, I'll show our guest my husband's pose. Do you guys want to see? <laughs> sure. Do our guests want to see a dance intermission? <laughs> Here he goes. It's PG. It's PG. We promise. I mean, that one's not as PG. I told him he looked kind of like a. So, so how does it work? You just take a picture. Does it just video him, and then it? So that's the app. Let me here. Look at the screen. It says Get Way app. So G E T S. Way G E T S Way dot app. I don't know. It's probably a spy of some sort. But anyway, what you do is you just hit video, and the video tells you what to do. So it tells you like do a football pose, spin around, now um, wave your hands in the air. Like it has you do ten different poses, and then it, you have to wait like fourteen minutes, and it comes up with that video. It's really cool. Except I think it might be a spy. That's the only problem. <laughs> so it just like morphs all those poses together into like a yeah. dance. Yeah. And then you pick the song and dance that you want it to go to. So Tony and all his dad friends did it. <laughs> oh, so Tina, you and your son, do you, you should show it to us. <laughs> you can go on camera and show us the, the get up dance. <laughs> Franco Brown. You just let us know. We'll put you up on video. Okay. So my sky is finished. Uh, I've got the dark blue, the light blue, and then dark blue. So I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys catch up. Give us a heads up when you are ready to move on. We'll wait for Trina to show us her and Tyson doing. Bronco Brown dance. <laughs> I thought it was just where you would take pictures of him and then it would do that for you because I was like, I could trick take her into taking this picture and then making a <laughs> making a dance out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the way yours look, Maria, where you can just see like the black spots like in the flowers like the absence of the color looks really cool <laughs> where you think the silhouette looks good yeah where you can like the absence of color uh -huh. looks pretty cool just by itself 
So yeah, the top and the bottom are the same color. She used the same dark blue on the top band and the and the bottom band, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the middle sky band is the only one that I added white to. All right, Trina's done. Sienna's done. Adam's kids are done. All right. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to paint in the stems of our flowers. So for this one, um, I'm just going to use some of the regular green. And remember last time we added uh, yellow to it, but this time um, I'm just going to do uh, green with a little bit of white in it. So just a little shade lighter green. Um, this is for the stems? For the stems of the flowers, yeah. And it's green, a lighter green than the top or bottom, the grass? Yeah, so the green that I used for the grass without the yellow in it, and I just added a little bit of white. And then again, same tired technique. <laughs> Just going to paint the center of those. All right, so you paint all three of those stems. And then our next step is going to be we're going to paint in our orbs. So for those, I, I used purple. Um, you can use any color you want. Um, now, the thing with purple, at least our purple, is that you have to add a little bit of white to it in order for it to really show up. Um, but just a little bit, you don't want to add a ton in there. Um, I don't, I mean, unless you want a really light purple, but um, I just want it to be enough to show up. So this is the purple I am using right there. And the reason I actually use paper plates is not just because I don't like having to rewrite my palettes. The main thing is I find that it's a lot easier to blend my paint on a plate. <laughs> but I still bring the palettes to the parties because that's what people like using, but I found out I'm a paper plate painter. Okay, so I've got some like uh, purple on my brush, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my orbs. So um, when you're painting these, if you kind of do your strokes in a circular motion, what it kind of does is it tricks your eye into seeing it as a round orb, so or a sphere rather than just a colored circle. So when you paint these in, actually try and do it with swirls or um, round strokes. 
just creates a little bit of depth or movement. All right, Mandy, who's this one? Um, let me, um, I don't know. <laughs> Give me a hint. Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Billy Joel. You do? Oh, look, Ella, Ella knew it. Um, you do have eclectic music. <laughs> okay so once you get all your um your your circles on here if you want to what you can do ella's mom knew it <laughs> not ella um you can add a tiny bit more white and make just like a lavender uh purple and just a little bit of paint on your brush and then just go along one side of your um one side of your orb, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but I'm just gonna kind of shade in one side of it loosely. So I'm just gonna keep doing letter C's back and forth and just kind of shade in one side of my orbs just to kind of give them a little bit more of a round shape. And again, I'm still using a dry brush because I don't wanna deposit a ton of color on there, just enough to give it a little bit of a highlight just so it looks a little bit more round. All right. And if you feel like your your circles get too light, you can go back in with the darker purple on the opposite side and just kind of keep working with them until you get them the way you like them. Sometimes you don't get it right the first time. I rarely ever do. <laughs> Just keep giving him a little bit of love. So if you guys were on the other day when uh, when Tammy did the monkey, she showed like a really good way to um, paint a circle just for future reference as if you draw like a letter C and then you do a C in the opposite direction instead of trying to do a full circle it makes a really good circle I was uh, I was watching a, a video on Facebook last night it was one of the Disney animators that worked on Frozen 2 I guess he specialized in um, Oh, what's that moose's name? Uh, or not a moose, he was a reindeer. Um, Sven. Sven, thank you. So it was um, the artist who does Sven, and uh, he was drawing it and doing a drawing tutorial. And he's like, we'll just start with the face. He's like, draw a circle. And he just literally drew this perfect circle. And I was kind of irritated. <laughs> I was like, it makes it look so easy. Like, you just draw a perfect circle. All right, so it looks like Maria's done with her orbs. Let me know when you guys are done and we'll move on. Done. Despy. So our next step and final thing to paint in is going to be the flowers, and then um, after that we're going to um, we're going to outline everything. 
And that's what kind of pulls it all together. I know right now it looks so sloppy. All right, so if you guys want to mix up the next color, it's going to be pink. So if you don't already have pink, we're going to mix up red and white. So I've got some red right here. And you don't need very much red at all. Just I'll show you just a little dot will do it. So that's literally all the red I'm going to use. And then I still have some white down here on my palette. But if you don't have some white, go ahead and get some white. And I'm going to continue using my pointed little brush. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to mix like a really hot pink. So in order to do that, I'm going to separate my red into two little areas right here, up here. So I just kind of scooted some of my red over and I'm just going to grab like a little bit of white on there and mix it into half of it because I want a hotter pink. I don't want a really light pink at this point. So just a little bit of white will give you this hot pink. Okay, and then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I definitely don't want a whole lot of color at this point. So I wipe my brush off. Woo. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom of these petals, not up at the top, but down at the base of them. And I'm gonna do these strokes kind of along the edges of my, um, of my petals and kind of fan it out at the end. Don't do an abrupt stop. And then I'm gonna come back every time back to the base and I'm just gonna keep pulling some uh, wisps all the way uh, along the flower. So you can kind of see what that looks like. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish off all the other petals as well. So always start right there at the base or the center of that flower, and then just drag some of that color up the, the petal. And if you kind of lift your brush up at the end, you'll kind of get more of a wispy style there. But I start off by going along those lines and then just kind of carrying up some paint along there. All right, I'm just going to keep doing that for all the petals. And if you start by just kind of outlining, painting my hair again, if you kind of start by outlining the, the two sides of the petal and then filling in the center, it kind of gives a little bit more definition to those petals. Ooh, I like yours, Maria. Kind of reminds me of like a parrot tulip. Yeah. It's, it's fun being a student. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been to Maria's paint parties before, but I think this is the first one she's been to of mine. <laughs> I know, I think it is. So when uh, Maria was the original founder of our company, and um, I went to one of the very first paint parties that she did, and then uh, the next one is one I hosted. So I had Maria come in and do a paint party for my friends and I, which is the one that convinced me to join her. <laughs> we do have Latin, Latin paint parties. <laughs> music. I'm like painting better because there's Latin music on. <laughs> when's your when's your Prince celebration? Yeah. 
I know I want to have one. I, I think it's like March or I'm sorry, April 23rd or something. I need to look at the calendar. Maria's a huge Prince fan. She went and saw, what do you call his, his estate? Paisley Park, yeah. Paisley Park, that's right. Did I ever tell you I went to his concert? Here? Uh-huh, it was, um, they announced it like the week of the concert. So every, um, every ticket was will call. And so the line to like, get into the, whatever it was, the, the venue was so long and so crowded. And like at the end, like towards the end of the line, it was just, there were so many people in line that, and we were all like starting in there, that I actually passed out. <laughs> when, was the one recent before he died, right before he died, or no. along with the 98? Yeah, it was like 98. Yeah, at the Pepsi Center? No, it wasn't the Pepsi Center. It was at a college. I think it was at DU. Oh. Um, but yeah, but the funny thing was, is I passed out. So they carried me inside and, uh, and they kept telling me like, they put me on the floor and, and the medic staff was there and they were like, well, we have to, uh, you know, we got to take you to medical. And I was like, not without my tickets. <laughs> so they went and got my tickets <laughs> before I would agree to go back to medical and get checked out. <laughs> I saw him. It, it, it was at the Pepsi Center, like whenever the last time his big concert was here in Colorado. 98 or 99 or something like that. When you were asking what his his house was called, I seriously almost said Graceland, but that's not right. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> okay, so once you get that first uh, layer of pink on there, what we're going to do now is mix a really light pink so you can use uh, the other part of your red, and we're going to mix a lot more white into it and get a really light very light um, uh, pastel pink. More white than pink, let's put it that way. Hey cutie. All right, Carol, thank you for joining us. Bye, Carol. Okay. So I've got really, really light pink. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the opposite of what I just did before. So this time I'm going to come along the uh, top of the um, petals and come along the edges down to the uh, darker pink. So again, do the outsides of the petals first and then kind of fill in the center as your paint starts to wane out. What is it, Katie? Can you give me this to try the beanie? Yes, you can paint this beanie. Yay. Oh, Issa saw, saw him in Chicago in 2008. I was actually, honestly, I was kind of disappointed when I saw him because he didn't do a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I actually knew from the 80s. He did a lot of his like newer jazz type stuff. I think he only did like one song from Purple Rain. <laughs> Okay, now again, don't worry too much about where these petals overlap because what we're going to do again is we're going to come between them and um, outline them in black.
I love this painting. Yay, Maria approved. <laughs> I feel like you can't, it's very difficult to mess it up, you know, like. Yeah, it's truly, it's like, it's such a mess that <laughs> it would be hard to mess it up. And I say a mess in a loving way. <laughs> Painting makes me feel like life is normal <sighs> right now. All right. Okay, and if you feel like you're getting too light with your colors, you can also take your pink and go back up over them if you feel like you need to. Just whatever you need to do to get it the way you like it. And again, if you go over it, just remember that second coat is going to show up a lot darker than your first coat does. So um, it'll just add a lot more color into it if you need it. All right, so I'm kind of finished with mine. If you get to a point in your painting where you feel like, hey, that looks pretty good, that's a good time to stop and put your paintbrush away. And that's kind of the end of the flower. So our, our last step, um, Will the step-by-step -step directions be uploaded to our email? Vicki wants to know. Uh, I think you're you're emailing these out, aren't you, Maria? Or Mandy? We don't have the step-by-step -step instructions, but the video will be recorded. Um, you'll get the recorded version. Well, does that help you? I don't, I actually, we, we might have the, we do have the instructions step-by-step step too. I guess we possibly could email those out, but yeah, the recorded video will be, um, emailed out to you and then, um, yeah. Uh, Katrina wanted to know if we could review the pink flowers. She was putting the pink To review the pink flowers? Yeah. So, um, Katrina, what we did is we mixed a hot pink. And so that's just red with a tiny bit of white into it. And again, make sure that you use kind of a dry brush. And then um, what you're gonna do is start at the base of your flower and kind of go on the outline of each petal and then kind of pull that paint up towards the tip of your, um, towards the tip of your flower. So you do that for each and every petal. And then you're gonna mix a very light pastel pink and you're gonna do it the opposite way. So you'll start up at the tip of the petal and drag the paint along the sides and then down towards the base. And so that's what gives you those two tones. You're welcome. Okay, so the next and final step is we're gonna use black paint. 
Um, and then wherever you have a spot on your canvas for that. And I'm still using uh, my pointy kind of um, uh, lining brush for this. If you guys have an actual liner, you can do that. Um, and then I'm gonna, um, <laughs> this is the one step we're not gonna use the dry brush technique on. So we're actually gonna get um, a good amount of paint on our brush. And again, I like to start at the top because then as I'm working, I'm not dragging my, uh, my hand through paint. But literally what we're gonna do is now just outline every shape. So if you can still see your lines, like you can still see my white lines or maybe your pencil lines, we're literally just gonna drag our brush down on top of every outline. So we're just gonna outline every shape now. I'll do a few and then show you guys up a little closer so you can see, but we wanna get a nice solid black line. And if you left that little bit of a gap between your shapes and the line itself, it'll almost create almost like a little bit of a shadow space between, uh, between your images. Now, Mandy was showing us earlier, she likes to use her pinky like this to kind of stabilize her hand. So if that's easier for you, you can kind of put your pinky down somewhere and use that to steady your hand. Um, I can't do that, so I don't. <laughs> It's very awkward for me. And if you feel like there's, you know, like you didn't get much of a tip on your leaves, this is a good time to add it. Okay, so you guys can kind of see how the outlining's starting to look there. And it's up to you how thick you want this line to be. But the main thing is try and get enough paint on your brush so that you don't end up having to stop and try and pick up that same line again because then it tends to not be a fluid line. And this is where that technique of when you're doing the circles, if you do the letter C and then a backwards C, that gives you a nice round circle. All right, so we'll just keep going along there, make sure everything gets outlined. Even the lines between your sky and your horizon and all that stuff. Don, since you came up with this painting, I'm always curious, like, how this process worked for you. Because did you, did you know, like, I love this outline part right here. Did you already plan that or it kind of just happened? No, I planned it. Um, I, uh, I didn't, I, well, I'm trying to think. I don't know that I planned, like, I knew I wanted the black to show through. Um, but I didn't know exactly how I was gonna accomplish it. Yeah, because when I just glanced at the painting, I thought, oh, well, like you just let the black show. And, but now this makes it so much cleaner. Uh-huh. Love it. Yeah, because the, the one, like I didn't do more than one draft of the painting, like the, the one that we put up is the original. Yeah. So I, I must, I plan to do the outlining on it. Yeah, I know I plan to do the outlining because I was thinking of stained glass and you st stained glass always has that lead in it. Right. So I wanted those really defined lines. Just tell her you're that good. I'm that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, Vicki, I'm sorry to hear they have a retinal detachment. That sounds painful. Yeah, Vicki, we'll try to uh, watch the video a little later. We'll have it, this one will probably be up in the morning because it takes a while to um, buffer and download. Um, but we'll send it to you guys in your email and it also will be posted on our gallery on the go page. And when you're done, show us your finished paintings. Oh, we just started thread, Mandy. We as in me, Mandy. <laughs> we, Mandy, you. Wait, what did you say? Start a, a thread for people to post their paintings. Oh, yeah, we'll do. What's our hashtag on this one? Uh, let Mandy pick it. <laughs> Hashtag water lilies with one L. Come look at my painting. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Oh man, is that is that um is that genetic, Vicky, or did you like hurt your eye? How do how do you detach your retina? <laughs> this is going to take a while. Yes, this is this is where the patience comes in. <laughs> the rest of it's really willy nilly and sketchy, but this part, um, this part takes a while. And if you if you hate outlining, you can wait for your painting to dry and use a black sharpie too. Oh man, I'm sorry, Vicky. That sounds awful. So once you guys get all these outlines done, then it really just kind of brings this painting to life. It really, really kind of comes together at this point. All right, thank you, Fire Tablet, for joining us. I can't see the name. I don't know who Fire Tablet is. <laughs>
anybody have any funny jokes? <laughs> so quiet. Hmm. But I'm trying to think of a joke. <laughs> I, I only know one joke. And it's really cheesy. You guys want to hear it? Of it's course. One, it's a one-liner. Well, I know two jokes. That's not true. Okay, so here it goes. Two peanuts were walking down the street, and one was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. So <laughs> Actually, I have never heard that one. <laughs> it's like one of the only jokes that has ever stuck in my head because <laughs> it's like a one-liner. <laughs> the only other one I know is, why was Tigger looking in the toilet? <laughs> he For <was> poo? <laughs> <laughs> we saw that one coming. <laughs> Bump. <laughs> ah, thanks, Janice. Olivia, I'm sure could probably teach this party. She's painted so many times with me. Olivia, your mom texted me a picture of your unicorn from earlier, and it was fantastic. My my little prodigy. <laughs> So each petal is outlined, is that right? Yep. Yes, each petal. Everything that you outlined with pencil or whatever gets a uh, black outline. Yeah, you can totally see the difference it makes once you add that black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it totally changes it. See the bottom, not painted, black or top black. Yeah. Oh, hey, Christina. That's so funny. I, well, when I saw the, it said Janice earlier and I, and then you were saying that you did all the, you know, had to help the girls earlier be at the paint mixer. And I'm like, they had two people helping, but it was just you. So good to see you, Christina, or see you virtually. <laughs> I ran into my friend at the grocery store today and we had to do like a virtual hug. <laughs> And Maria, I pulled, I pulled a, I pulled a Maria today and I went, well, yesterday and I went to Target because I, I literally did need like milk and like things like that. And I happened to be in that part of town. So I just stopped at, stopped at Target. And then the next thing I knew, I was in the throw pillow aisle and I'm just like wandering around because there's nobody there. And then I'm like, wait, you're not supposed to be here. Go home. <laughs> It's a little piece. It's a secret little piece of uh, normalcy at Target. Yeah, I know, Christina. I'm a hugger too, so it's very awkward for me to like just say hi to someone. I did see like the best thing about all of this is um, I feel like it's made for really good jokes and memes on Facebook. <laughs> And did you see the one where it's like, you know, we're supposed to stay apart, you know, social distancing, all this. And it's like introverts everywhere are like, I've been preparing for this my whole life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My, my uh, father-in-law, he's a total introvert. And uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny because I asked my husband, I was like, did you check up on your dad? And I thought, no, nah, never mind. He's fine. <laughs> like, he's fine. Par for the course for him. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Nicole. Thanks for joining us. Be sure and post a picture so we can see your painting. Hashtag water lilies 1L. <laughs> and I did put a, th started a thread on Facebook, but you can just throw it in the comments there. 
on our gallery on the go page? I did, yep. What do you call a dinosaur with no eyes? Do you think he saw us? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Do you think he saw us? <laughs> you think he saw us? Okay, I think I am done outlining. Woohoo! Okay, so when you guys get finished, it may look something like that. Yours looks just like your original. <laughs> well, this isn't even the original. This is the one I did on our live gallery guides. Wow. Oh. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> it looks like you can't create the same colors twice. Yeah. I love Bye, it. Thanks for joining us. You guys have a good night. The hardest part for me is outlining these petals. Yeah. Thanks, Vicki. There, I'll pull these up closer so you guys can see them better. <laughs> Don't forget to sign your paintings when you're all finished. Oh, that's right. I always say that's our last and final step, should you choose to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to claim this. And if it's really bad, just put your sibling's name on it and give it away to mom as a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> when I painted with my sister one time, this was like super early on in our business and her painting was really bad. And I only say that because it's my sister and I can say that. Um, I don't say that about any of my other customers, but um, her painting was, was kind of awful. And so we, we took like a group picture. So she held my painting in the group picture. And I was, my mom and I were talking and she was like, oh, I saw the pictures from the party on Facebook. Megan did such a good job. I'm like, no, she didn't. That was mine. <laughs> <sighs> All right, looks like everyone's, oh, we still got, we still have quite a few people on, but it looks like people are starting to wind down. Thanks, Carrie. I'm glad you were joining us. And Lori. There's mine. Mine is done. Oh. Oh, yeah, Olivia, I was just thinking, do you think our, our reunion crew could do this? Because we usually do kid paintings. We've done a few adult ones, but most of them have been more kid friendly. Um, so this is probably a big, um, a big jump. And I'm sure you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, my daughter came up to me while we were, um, while we were painting and she asked if she can paint this one tomorrow. She gave you a scary face. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a no? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, they can't do that. <laughs> I love this painting. I know, your pinks turned out really good. You did. I know, I think mine are going to be tulips, not water lilies. I love tulips. I don't, I mean, I guess you can call whatever you want, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know what a water, I mean, the water lily in the water, like do they grow <laughs> in the water? Well, you can imagine there's water at the bottom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's just cut off, you can't see it. <laughs> I have a picture of some water lilies that we saw. Um, so you didn't put any lines at all in the, in the leaves, right? No veins or anything? I didn't what? Um, I love it, no veins in the leaves. No, no, no other detail. You know, like because if it was stained glass, it wouldn't, it right. wouldn't have any of that. True. Yeah, Christina, I think um, we used to do like kind of a tween teen um, party at the rec center. Um, maybe we'll try to bring that back because we do have a lot of those kiddos that have grown up in that kids in canvas program. And, you know, they're ready to move on and do some more challenging stuff like this. Um, that's probably too difficult for our younger kiddos, but we could totally try to do a tween party and do some of this little more advanced artwork. 
Oh, how fun you lived in England. Yeah, their, their youngest daughter was born in somewhere. I don't, I don't want to say Paris. I don't think that's right. No, that wouldn't be England. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really bad at, at the geography, but even I know that one. <laughs> Ooh. My dog keeps coming to say hi, so I'm going to bring him on camera to say hi. Aww. <laughs> he's acting like he's in trouble now, though. <laughs> oh, made in Paris. Made in Paris. She was made in Paris. <laughs> I knew I had something. It was Paris something. Oh. One of my, uh, one of the gals in my craft group, she's from England. I love listening to her talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maria, what happened to you? I took it off. I took, um, <laughs> I took my, my uh, phone off. Oh, okay. Um, so you have my, I'm going to take a picture now and post it on the link. That's why. Do you want me to get out? I want to win a contest. No, she's taking a picture of her own, Dawn. Oh, of hers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to be in the picture. <laughs> I, I am going to get a picture of you on there, actually. Hold on. Stay right there. Stay right where you are. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Whoa. Oh. I love little kids with English accents. It's so cute. Does she call you mom? <laughs> all right, cool. Are we all done? I think so. We are finished. It's done. Well, you guys of course, there's no more. There's no more steps after this. So take your time and finish them up, or finish tomorrow, or whatever. But thank you guys for joining us. Thank Thanks, Don. It turned out great. <laughs> Yay. I know. I loved it so much. Thank you. All right. Bye, All right, bye guys. Have a good night. See everyone. Bye. Later. Good night. Thank you, Don. <laughs>